Thanks to Sacramento State and the State Hornet, I was recently able to attend a convention for student journalists. The convention held in La Jolla, California, took place from February 28th to March 2nd, and I was selected by advisor Stu Van Aersdale as part of the delegation representing the State Hornet, and I was one of few student journalists who attended that was not an editor of their organization. These are my experiences at the convention and my overview and review of the panels, discussions, and lectures that I attended. Please note that any opinion expressed in this video is mine and mine alone. Although I am a reporter for the State Hornet, this video is not endorsed by the State Hornet or Sac State. Nor is this video in any way sponsored by the State Hornet, Sac State, or the Associated Collegiate Press. After arriving in La Jolla via Greyhound, my first lecture was How to Land Your First Job, led by Louis Gomez and Andrew Dwyer. I really liked this lecture and appreciated the energy, confidence, and dedication which both speakers exhibited. Here's some of the important things that I wrote down from the lecture. Do your research and find out what the organization you're applying for needs. What does their dream employee look like? If you don't meet the requirements for a job ad, don't let that stop you from applying. The organization might just be hoping to score some highly qualified candidate. Besides, the worst thing that could happen is that you don't get the job. And don't forget to follow up. So you didn't get the job, contact the company again in the future anyway. Keep your name on the, their minds so that when there is a new opportunity, you are the first person that they call. And finally, during an interview, don't be afraid to ask hard questions. You're a journalist, asking hard questions is part of your job. And if you can't ask hard questions of someone who is interviewing you for a job, how are they supposed to expect you to ask hard questions when you were interviewing somebody else? The speakers were invested in seeing young journalists thrive and offered very good advice to get where you wanted to get. They stressed the importance of internships, networking, and building a portfolio. I'm very thankful to both of these gentlemen for the information which they provided as well as the resources that they gave out during the lecture and have since provided on Twitter as well. Landing a job and surviving the first year was next, led by Bryce Johnston, an account executive of Amazon. Bryce's session was mostly about his journey from obtaining a degree in radio broadcasting from a small college in the Midwest to where he is now and how he got there. He talked about keeping an up-to-date resume at all times and how important it is to voice your goals with your superiors regardless of how far off they are. In Bryce's case, he had to tell three superiors that he was intending to transfer to California before he made the move. He also talked about finding a job and stressed the importance of always being networking. Like the first session I talked about, Bryce also recommended applying for jobs even if you were underqualified and stressed the importance of asking questions when you were being interviewed for any position. I really enjoyed this session and I connected with Bryce because I too have a degree in radio broadcasting. I think that it was very helpful to know where hard work and dedication can take you even if you didn't attend the biggest and best school. Also, I had to ask Bryce when he decided he wanted to be a sales weasel, and he said as soon as he saw the pay. The next session I attended was Saturday's keynote presentation, The Road's Most Traveled Causes and Consequences of Illegal Immigration. This was photojournalist Don Berletti's presentation on illegal immigration and the visual stories he told about immigration. Although I'm more of an audio person myself, I appreciated the work that Don Berletti did as well as the experience of listening to his story about the work that won him a Pulitzer Prize. Before I touch on the next session, there's a story related to it worth mentioning. Friday night, I was called out by Krista Reed, an ad representative for Colorado State University. While talking to me, Krista told me about her panel Saturday, which focused on advertising marijuana products in student media. I told Krista that I would attend the panel, and I did, despite not having any pool in what is advertised in the State Hornet. In spite of this, I enjoyed the panel as it was well constructed and provided good information, stressed the importance of being aware of your state's laws, and the importance of communicating with your school before jumping into a deal that could burn more than just weed. 
My next lecture was the first one that I did not enjoy. It was titled The Ins and Outs of Entertainment Writing. And during this lecture, George Varga of the San Diego Union Tribune seemed like he had no overall plan for what exactly he was going to cover. Honestly, I forgot most of it because it felt like a wasted opportunity to teach student journalists about a &E, a section which I looked forward to writing articles for in the State Hornet in April. The final session I attended Saturday was titled Know the Band, the Music Journalist Game Show. This session was also headed up by someone I had met the night before. In this case, that it would be Mercer County Community College senior reporter Chelsea Johnstone. This session was very different than anything else offered at the convention, and it was a blast. Chelsea asked for four volunteers who played the part of the band Pineapple Platform, and the rest of the journalists split into two groups and interviewed the band. I got the chance to play 61-year-old guitarist Granny El, Genos El Jonessa, and my role was essentially to go off topic and rant during the interview. The band also included an egocentric lead singer, a quiet bassist, and a sarcastic drummer. The role playing really taught me how easily journalists focus on a single person during interviews, even when they have access to a diverse group, and it taught me the importance of asking questions of everyone in the group, not just the person who tries to control the conversation. Saturday started off with the State Hornet's very own Jordan Dollar Hyde's presentation titled why newsletters are the new print. For this session, I'm afraid I'm a little biased and it would be best that I didn't review Jordan's presentation, even though I don't have anything negative to say about it. So instead, I'll just say, good job, Jordan, you did the State Hunter Proud, and move on. Up next was Barbara Kingsley Wilson's How to Interview Anyone About Anything. While this wasn't one of my favorite sessions, there was still good information and it didn't feel as boring as sitting through the a e lecture. I took quite a few notes during this session and I learned a thing or two, and maybe I'm just being a little too critical, but it wasn't overly memorable. Here's some of the things I wrote down. Avoid asking questions that are basically just small talk, such as, how is the game? Don't ask multiple questions at a time. You might confuse the person you're interviewing. Take your time. Avoid words which may trigger a reaction from the person you were interviewing. Don't suggest to a wrestler that wrestling is fake, or if you do, use a straw man. Uh, some people say wrestling is fake. Don't overshare. Your readers don't want to hear about who you are. They want to know about the person you are interviewing. That is why you are interviewing them and not writing your own biography. Avoid judgment in questions instead of saying, you killed him, didn't you? Go with, did you kill him? The first will result in a defensive answer and you don't want anyone you are interviewing to get defensive. The last thing Barbara said not to do was to avoid asking closed questions when you should be asking an open question. Uh, for example, instead of, would you say that you are an awesome person, consider what makes you an awesome person. Barbara also stressed that after you ask a question, shut up, and don't be afraid of awkward silences. Awkward silences only matter if you are live. They can be edited out if the interview is being broadcast, and they don't matter in print, but they can add color. The most important thing that Barbara stressed was to do your homework and properly research the person in question, so that you know what questions to answer, what questions to ask, and what has already been asked. However, if you don't have time to do proper research, start with asking, what is your goal in doing XYZ? What are some of the obstacles that you faced? How did you overcome those obstacles, and where did you start? Just before lunch on Saturday, I went to a discussion session titled Right and Respectful, How to Properly Report LGBTQ Stories. The discussion was led by Benny Cartwright of the San Diego Gay and Lesbian News. I went to this session because, frankly, I felt unaware of the protocols when I was writing the story about Sac State's staff LGBTQ group, QTFAS. Knowing that continuing work as a journalist would mean that I would likely be put into a similar situation again, I went to this discussion with an open mind ready to learn. And I did learn. I learned about the words that the LGBTQ com community is comfortable with, being used to describe them, and some of the pitfalls to avoid. The important thing here is to use the correct terminology when dealing with LGBTQ individuals. 
I enjoyed this session and I am very thankful for the information. After lunch, I attended the event titled Writer's Block Party Live Podcast Recording. This was probably my favorite session and it's a big part of why I'm making this video. During this event, the Writer's Block Party Podcast Group, I'll link to them below, explained how to get started podcasting and went over the equipment that they used to do their podcast, most of which is secondhand equipment. The Writer's Block Party Podcast Group really had a lot of charisma and made me seriously think about why I haven't done any podcast work. Unfortunately, I left halfway during the session to attend another session. That was a mistake. The session So You Want to Be a Broadcast Journalist was one of the first events that I wanted to attend and I was disappointed in it. Patty Peaburn and Kelly Moore of Cal Poly talked about their experience in television barely touching on radio as a footnote and how they suggested that anyone interested in being a video journalist should work towards their goal. The information that Patty and Kelly provided was sound but I felt that radio was unfairly left out even with Patty talking about her experience in radio a little. I left the session wishing that I had just stayed in the previous session I had left early because it connected with my interests more. Finally, at the end of Saturday was the final keynote. This one was a panel discussion led by the Pepperdine Graphic Group of Pepperdine University who talked about their experiences covering a live shooter event and a wildfire which forced their campus to shelter in place. This was a very touching story with great graphics and a personal connection. Most importantly, it's something that student journalists don't think they'll have to cover until they graduate and start working in journalism. I admire the work that the Pepperdine Graphics Group put in and I hope that they never have to deal with such tragedies again. After the keynote, uh, attending student journalist groups were recognized for their works in the best of show. The State Hornet was awarded second place in two categories and third in another. Although my involvement in getting these awards is minimal, I am proud for the State Hornet and I look forward to the rest of the semester as a student journalist. And that is my experience at the Student Journalist Convention in La Jolla, California. Once again, I'd like to thank Stu Van Aersdale and the State Hornet for giving me the chance to experience this convention and I would like to thank the ACP and everyone involved for putting on the convention. But most of all, I'd like to thank you for listening.